to our class on machine learning. So today we are going to look at Adaboost and other ensemble algorithm. So if you remember that last class we have discussed about random forest. So we will uh, first discuss about how it is different from random forest or bagging. And then uh, we will look at the maths uh, behind it. And then finally we look at how Adaboost does the prediction. Okay, so that's the kind of overall flow. So if you remember in random forest, what we do is that there are random forest or bagging, there are different uh, decision trees being built on either different training observations or taking different sample features. And then you finally combine them in a voting scheme and the uh, prediction is done, okay? So if we look at the characteristics, the trees are built parallelly or can be built parallelly. The trees are fully grown, grown trees with varying depth. So one tree's depth can vary from another and they are built independent of each other. So they don't have any relation with each other. That's why they can build parallelly. The trees' decisions have equal weight. And not only that, the training observations also has equal weight. Okay. So these are some very, very important assumptions or postulates regarding to random forest or bagging. And how many of them are true for boosting? Interestingly, none of them works for boosting. So let's take a look at boosting now, okay? So the basic working is like this, that we build decision trees, which has only one speed, okay? And they are called as decision stump. So this is a new term, decision stump, which will have a, you know, uh, nomenclature like this. There will be an attribute whose value will check. And if it is yes, it is class one, else it is no. So basically, you know, it will be one attribute based, okay? So these are your decision stumps and you can understand that if you build decision stumps, there will be a lot of misclassification, okay? So that's why they are called weak learners. And now they are built sequentially, okay? So one decision, one stump is made, uh, that result is inspected, then the next stump is built and that's, that's how it proceeds. So the training observation where misclassification happened for the nth layer or nth stump, their weight is increased in n plus one nth layer, okay? So, so that, you know, this tree is more observant on uh, not making error on the error that has been made at the previous year. And in the final prediction, the votes are weighted based on the classification performance of the decision term. Okay. So it is also a soft voting scheme, not a hard voting scheme. All right. So in boosting, what happens is, as I said, that, you know, there will be stumps, which will be trained, their result will be uh, put to the next uh, stump again uh, the results based on the error coming from the previous stump or this stump will be fed in the, into the next decision stump that's how it works and finally you know their predictions are used to obtain the final result however if you note that the line weights uh, that have been shown over here are, are different okay so that is not accidental that just means that everyone will have a different weightage Okay, now let's look at the math. So here is a data set, you know, uh, which had two attributes and uh, the classic and the, this at uh, this column decision just tells that whether the stumps, accurate, uh, stumps prediction was correct or not. Okay, so four cases. So first row, th third row, fourth row, fifth row, this has this was correct. Whereas in the second row, this was not correct. And initially, all uh, all rows will have equal weight or all observation will have equal weight. And if I have M observation, then the weight for each row will be 1 by M. Okay. Now, how do I calculate the misclassification rate? So normal misclassification rate uh, will give us a misclassification of 1 by 5, right? But in case of uh, boosting, as we are uh, using a weight, so that weight is being used here uh, in both the numerator and denominator calculation. Okay. So in numerator, you have the misclassifications where yi, i, uh, yj, i dash, which is the prediction is not equal to yi. So you, you are checking where it is not equal to yi and uh, that is your misclassification. And in, below, you have the weight of all training observations. So essentially, this is your misclassification or weighted misclassification. So in our case, it will be anyway 1 by 5 because everyone has same weight. 
So the calculation is shown over here. It is 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 times. So it is 0 0.2 by 1, which is 1. Okay. Now let's look at the weight of decision stump. Okay. So weight of decision stump comes from that uh, or it is a factor of how accurate the decision is. Okay. So this is your misclassification. So 1 minus Rj is actually how many times you are going correct and uh, RJ is how many times you are misclassifying. So how many times you are doing correctly and how many times you are misclassification, right? So the ratio will be bigger for uh, for the trees that are classifying better, okay? And NITA is a learning rate. So we will look at, uh, we'll look at the significance of the, the ratio very soon. So, this is the ratio of correctly classified to incorrectly classified. Had the ratio naturally higher is the weight of the tree. Okay, so that's the intuition which is followed. So if we put on this value of you know 0.8 and 0.2 over here and use a NETA value or learning rate of 0.2, we get a uh, decision stamp weight of 0.4. So this 0.4 has two uh, you know two usage. One usage is it will be used to update the observations weight in the next step also uh, this will be used when the final prediction is being done okay so let's uh, quickly see what is the effect of uh, effect of this ratio or or uh, misclassification uh, with the decision tree weight okay so as you see when when your misclassification or or you are in you are correctly uh, you are correct only 0 0.2 times then you know your weight is very very less okay so you are correct only at 0 0.2 times your weight is negative okay so it will hardly matter and when you are actually at a 0 0.7 0 0.8 range your weightage increases to 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 this way okay so that's how it works now let's come back and see how the weight is updated so this is the alpha that we calculated and if you remember uh, the value of alpha we got alpha to be earlier at 0 0.4 so what it actually says is that there are the weights will not change where it correctly classified however where it misclassified the weight will be increased by this factor okay so uh, this comes to be 1.49 right exponential of 0.4 comes to be 1.49 so what we do is now we actually multiply this by 1.49 and we get 0 0.298 however now when we add it up it comes to 1.098 and you can understand that these are probabilities so it cannot be more than one so what we do is we normalize so basically we we divide or adjust all the weights by this factor of 1.098 and so that now in my final figure it gets one however the most important point to note over here is that all the instances which were correctly classified has a weight of now 0 0.18 however the one that was misclassified has a weight of 0 0.27 now if you remember that for decision tree when we are making a split Gini index can be used so here instead of Gini index we use weighted Gini index so what weighted Gini index essentially does is that the misclassification which happens which which has happened earlier will be given more weight right so in the Gini index probability this weight is there so a misclassification on this and a misclassification of this will not be same okay so that's how you know the the tree will force to put to not make errors on the observation that has been misclassified earlier okay so that's the idea that's how a decision stump corrects or builds upon the errors of the previous layer decision stump. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, come to the prediction. So prediction has an equation like this. It may be intimidating, but it is very simple. What it says is that, you know, what this argmax always does is that what value of k. So if you give an argument k, which k maximizes this term. Okay. And this term is not, nothing but it says that for which of the class, okay, so for k is the class, so for which of the class you, your decision stamps has higher weightage, okay. So let's understand this with an example. 
So let's say you know you have four decision stamp, stamp one, stamp two, stamp three, and stamp four. Stamp one has said class one, stamp two said class two, stamp three says class two, and stamp four says class three. Okay. And now let's say that you know this uh, decision stamp credibility or weight are like this. Okay. So stamp one has a credibility of 0 0.2, stamp two has a credibility of 0 0.4. Stamp 3 has a credibility of 0 0.3 and Stamp 4 has a credibility of 0 0.6. So we simply add it up because you see that you, you are doing a summation over here. And uh, finally, what you do is you look at and see that, okay, which one has higher weightage, which tree was more accurate. So, uh, you know, you, you say that this belongs to class 1. Okay. So essentially, in today's class, we saw a very, very intuitive algorithm called as Adaboost. And Adaboost has, uh, you know, quite a few differences with uh, random forest. So as usual, put your, you know, questions and I will be happy to answer them one by one.